guys had fun the last couple days? Have you? Awesome. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Okay. We're, uh, we had, okay, chefs and cooks, who had an awesome time next door? Yeah. What is the food going to be like? Sexy. Sexy. Yeah, baby. All right. Okay. We're going to talk about the menu. You're going to experience some of this awesome food very shortly. What we're going to do, what we're going to do, everyone listening, please. What we're going to do is we're going to spend a half an hour talking about value core and premium, talk about the menu and how to build it. And then what we're going to ask you to do is to work in your respective groups with your team from where you come from and start to build your menu a little bit. Of course, you're not going to finish your menu today. That's okay. But oh, maybe, you're, maybe you're a rock star like Jen. You will finish it, right? Exactly. But after you taste the food next door, you might find yourself wanting to change something out. Surely, you're here, sweetheart. Give me a hug. Hi, honey. How are you? How are you? Good, thanks. Sharon still owes me a date, though. I'm still waiting. So, anyway. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Then we're going to have you build your menus, and you might want to change them. Uh, I'm going to walk around as well. Uh, to, so if you have any questions, I'll help you as well. So 11.30 to 12, we're going to do this here, presentation. And then 12 to 12.30, menu build. Then we're going, to, we're, we're going to quickly, everyone listen, let's go. Come on. Thank you. And then, uh, and then at 12, 12.30, we're going to walk across and we're going to enjoy some food. And then Catherine, where's Catherine? I believe we're coming back here again to finish up, correct? Awesome, thank you. Okay. Here's what you want to focus on is the margin. Why do you want to focus on margin over, over food cost? Michelle, why? What's that? Dollars in the bank. Awesome, girl. Awesome. That's why. Can you put percents in the bank? Mark Carlson? I tried. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I tried too. Doesn't work. Has anyone ever seen Mark without a tie? Put your hand up. I'm going to, you know what? I am so proud of myself, and I'll tell you why. Okay? All right? I just tweeted nonstop when we were across the road. Who, who's on Twitter? Who follows me on Twitter? <laughs> okay, I'm done for the day then. <laughs> Bastards, all of you. Okay? You can follow me on Twitter at ChefWayne007, licensed to grill. What's good, eh, Mark? Isn't that good? Ow! I hurt my hand, shit. So anyway, I got eight of my tweets were favorited already. I think that's got to be a record for Twitter, right? Right? Okay. Anyway, awesome food coming up, so that's good. You can't put percents in the bank. Mark tried. Like Michelle said, you put dollars in the bank, right? And that's what it's about, margin. We're going to show you why the margin is so important because sometimes what happens as a company is we get hung up on food cost, right? Food cost. You have to achieve your food cost, but there's a way of doing that called menu mix. And that is, it's okay to have something a little bit higher priced in there from a cost perspective as long as it balances out. That's why if you're not on Webtrition, you should be on Webtrition because it allows you to go in there and do your menu mix very, very easily. Isn't that right, Jesse? Exactly. Okay? So we want to focus on that. What is menu engineering? Someone tell me. Mark. Planning. Planning? Mark? Other Mark? Yeah, developing your menu mix so that you achieve your, your objectives. Okay. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Chef Simon. Exactly. Just to let you know, I got, oh, I, I stand corrected, 13 favorites now. 13. So, carry on. You and Justin Bieber. Me and Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wishes he was as sexy as me. Yeah. So, exactly. Anybody else? What is menu engineering? Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Anyone? Come on. Developing. I'm sorry? Satisfying your customers. Developing the proper menu mix. Devel developing the proper menu mix. Good. The plan for success. Plan for success. Nice to see you too, sweetheart. How you doing? Awesome. Okay, good. All right. So it's the profitability of a recipe. 
the profitability of a recipe, right? Dollars. Not the food cost, but the dollars. How much money are we putting in the bank? It's a process to review and evaluate menu items, right? And that's what you guys are going to do when you plan your menu today. Evaluate. Take a look at what the cost is. Take a look at what the selling price is. How many dollars are you putting in the bank? Right? It's margin contribution. We often get hung up thinking that, you know what, if I'm going to sell something for 32% food cost, I'm a rock star. That's what I'm going to do. Right? Because my food cost is going to be great. Food cost might be great, but you're also missing a huge opportunity for like for like revenue, and you're also missing a huge opportunity to put dollars in the bank. Because there's nothing wrong with having something for a 45% food cost, right, on your menu if it still balances out to 32 or 34 percent, whatever your food cost might be. Nothing wrong with that. In general, I love this here. It's the methodical selecting, costing, pricing, and evaluating of your menu items. That's what it is. Don't get hung up on the food cost. Don't get hung up on saying, I can't get that selling price because there's no way I'll get it at my unit. We proved all that wrong when we did the pilots because we had a lot of pushback. Right, Catherine? Right? Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's busy tweeting. I think she's favoriting my tweets, right? <laughs> awesome. Good for you. But that's the thing, though, right? They said they couldn't sell certain items, but they did. They, they couldn't get a certain selling price, but they did. Right? And that's what it comes down to. So I want you guys to challenge yourself. Pick an item based on you know what's going to sell. Don't pick an item based on, oh, it's a 32% food cost and that's what I'm going to go with. Look at the dollars you want to put in the bank. Okay? Questions, don't be afraid to shout out. Okay? How to calculate your profit margin. Take your selling price minus the cost of that item times the number of portions sold will equal the profit of that item. The food cost profit, before labor, before everything else, right? But that's what we're focusing on right now. So for example, $5.75 selling price, $1.75 cost, you're looking at $4, okay? If you sold 75 of that, what's your profit? $300, awesome. We got some guys here that don't need calculators or, or, or have more than 10 fingers. That's good, okay? And that's how you calculate it out, okay? The one thing you need to understand on a serious note is it's a balancing act between margin and food cost, right? I, I, I do a menu, menu engineering presentation when I do food cost 101 for the mob training. And we have a lot of fun with this because some people it's very hard to get out of that zone of food cost, right? Because that's what we live in as a food, as a food service company, right? That's what it is. But it's a balancing act. And, there's, and like I said before, there's nothing wrong with having items on your menu that are 45% food cost, or 42% food cost, right? Have a few of them on there, as long as it balances out that you're achieving what your food cost should be for that item. Remember, you've got more than one station in your servery, right? How many have more than, say, three or four stations in their survey? A lot of people. A lot of people. So there's nothing wrong with having maybe a little bit higher food cost for on the go overall. Maybe it runs around 38%. Nothing wrong with that. Because your other outlets will help balance that off. Okay? Any questions on this? Anyone? Does everybody get it? Because if you don't get it, then, then let's have a conversation, a little bit of a chat about it. And we can help you. Because it's okay. All right? I showed you guys numbers yesterday on waste, right? Who was astounded by those numbers on waste? Who was happy with those numbers on waste? Yeah, nobody was. I also shared next door with the guys because we had a little portioning exercise with tuna, pineapple, and chicken. Chicken. And everyone underportioned, right? Why do they underportion? Because they weren't following a recipe. Everyone thinks, oh, well, I underportioned. That's awesome. No, it's not awesome because you lost your value, right? And we also, well, so very quickly, the guys at the back of the house, what were some of the aha moments we had today when we came in? Very quickly, chefs. Not enough Sorry, what was that? Not enough production done. Not enough, because they, they didn't follow the recipe. What else? 
Exactly, exactly. So Jesse, my new girlfriend, sorry Sharon, sorry. <laughs> but she had an awesome idea today and we followed it. So she pulled me aside, we're having a cup of coffee and she said, are, are we going to switch the groups up now? And I said, never thought about that. But that was an awesome idea. So what we did is we, the group that prepped everything as part of the process for group seven now became group one and vice versa. And what do we find, guys and gals? A lot of aha moments, right? We didn't follow the recipes to a T. Is that good? No, it's not. It's not. We've got to follow those recipes to a T. So we had some good learnings next door on why that's important. Some of the, some of the stuff we had to go back and redo, right? Why? Because we're striving for perfection. And what else? 212 degrees. Good one, Peter. Awesome. Okay. Let's talk about value core and premium. Talking about margin. Why is it so important? Okay, I'm going to show you why pulling someone from a value into a core item is awesome. Why pulling someone from a core into a premium is even better. Because you're putting dollars in the banks. That's what you're doing. Okay? And that's what we're going to focus on. When we did the pilot, one in three sandwiches we sold was a premium. 27%. I think that's pretty damn good. One in every three sandwiches we sold, we pulled someone into a premium. So we talked about 14% like-for-like -like revenue increase in on the go. I'm going to show you what it can help do to your bottom line if you do it properly. Take a look at this. Here's the margin opportunity, right? The margin opportunity, dollars that you're going to put in the bank. For a wedge sandwich value, $249. For a core, $369. For a premium, $476. If we sold 35 every day, Here's what you should showcase at the end. For seven, so, sorry, for, for a five or seven day operation here, chart wells because you're only 32 weeks of the year. Look at that. Here's the difference. If you pull someone from a value into a core, $15,000 to your bottom line. Who wants $15,000 after the bottom line? Put their hand up. Yeah, say I believe. I believe, I believe. exactly, exactly. Look at this. Look at this here. Pulling from a core into a premium, $13,000. Imagine the impact if you pulled someone from a value into a premium right off the bat. What does that come to? Awesome, Walter. You must be good at math. Good for you, buddy. $29,000 by taking someone from a wedge sandwich, right? From a wedge sandwich into a premium sandwich. That's simple. And how can we do that? Suggestions, thoughts, how can we do it? Sampling. Sampling. Fist pump it. Awesome. Shh. You're not as strong as Mark though. Hey, Mark almost hurt my hand. I know. The big rock though almost got me. Anybody, so sampling, what else can we do? Marketing. Marketing. What else? What was that? Smile? Smile. There you go. Suggestive selling, right? It looks, great. it looks great, exactly. You're going to see some of the premium sandwiches today as well, right? And you're going to see the difference that it does and how it looks when you package it as well. So think about this. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind when you start to build your menu, right? Don't say, I can't get $6.99. I can't get $7.49 because you haven't tried yet, right? And don't say I can't get this here all of focaccia because then that's not going to sell. It's awesome with the roasted garlic aioli. I think that alone got five, five favorite tweets, right? I think so. Okay. What happens if you pull someone from a fresh fruit into a parfait or from a parfait into a break box? Because why? Because people said I can't sell the break boxes. They're not going to sell in my unit. Why? Even though they sell like hotcakes at Starbucks, they don't know why. It's one of the biggest selling things right now, right? So don't, so the point I'm trying to get across here, guys, is don't say you can't until you try, okay? It's better you put that break box or that premium sandwich on your menu for three weeks and you sell three and then have to change it and say, you know what, it didn't sell. But imagine if you put it on there and you sold 33, you sold 23, you sold 13. 
Imagine the impact to your bottom line, right? Okay? So, same, same scenario. Profit, margin, $1.37 on fruit, $3.69 on the parfaits, break box is about $4.76. Who wouldn't want to put that much in their bank every single day, right? Again, look at it. Look at the impact. If you can take someone from a fresh fruit into a break box, look at fresh fruit to a parfait, $12,000. Look at this. From a parfait into a break box, 18,000. Walter, what if I bring someone from a fresh fruit to a protein? How much? 38,000. Thank you, brother. Thank you. 38 sold. Actually, it's a little more, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you were busy, you, you were busy favoriting my tweet, weren't you? Yeah, that's okay. But guys, $30,000, right? $30,000 by taking someone from a fresh fruit into a break box, protein, cheese, whatever. Not that difficult. Again, we sample it, right? Marketing. It's promoting it, right? That's what you've got to do. Okay? All right? Any questions on this here? Yes, Maria? It's just not marketing and promoting. It's making sure that it's in the cooler for sale every day. And, and what do they have to do to, to, to ensure that? What do they have to do? I think it's just call it par stock. I just say do proper production. Yeah, it's called par stocks. It's called controlling your waste, controlling your leftovers, proper production, following the process that we identified, right? And not just choosing certain parts of it because it fits fits you or it's too busy, right? Okay? Any questions on this here? Because I can't remember. I think that's the okay, we'll come to that in a second, so we're almost done. Any questions? No? That's awesome. That's great. Okay, so we call this the menu matrix. It's a big word, eh? I like it. Eh? <laughs> Do you want to tell them the story about that? Are you sure? <laughs> very okay. All right, just very. We have enough time. Very quickly, because everyone likes a story. Mark and I went down. How many years ago now? Three, four years ago to the states for a food cost uh, food cost seminar. So. Uh, Kind of the first time that Mark and I hung out together, actually. It's kind of cool, right? So, and um, I guess I said A a lot in the States. So Mark made the comment, Chef, uh, can you kind of cut down on the A a little bit? I said, I'll try, eh? I said, I'll. <laughs> anyway, okay. So what I want you first to focus on is, are, are you a small, a medium, or a large account? Do you know what you are? If you don't know what you are, Catherine can help you at the end to determine whether you're a small, medium, or a large. Because she has a separate matrix that determines the small, medium, or large. Don't you? Just, just, just go with me, dear. Go with me, all right? Awesome. That's good. What's that? It'll be under the culinary section, right? Culinary resources, I think. The last page, Jeremy said. Okay. All right? So, so what you want to focus on first, like I said, is small, medium, and large, small, medium, and large, small, medium, and large, whether you are one of those accounts. Okay, Did, has everyone found it? Everyone's got it? Okay, good. Okay, so everyone focus on me. It's all about me, right? Focus on me, please. Okay, all right? So, once you know whether you're a small, medium, or a large account, then what you need to focus on is the value, the core, and the premium, and also on the scale over here, column of the wedge, the sandwiches, the wraps, the flatbreads, the entree salads, the break boxes, the side salads, the snack boxes, the yogurts, and the desserts. And everything's broken down in the menu, right? So everyone's got the menu as well in there. You'll see value, core, and premium, and you'll see the, where you've got the wedges, the baguettes, the focaccias, the wraps, and all that, and all that follows down here as well, okay? Thanks, brother. So what we want you to focus on now as you go into this exercise is we want you to focus on the matrix. So, so for a wedge sandwich, for a small, you would have two. For a medium, you would have two. For a large, you would have three. For a sandwich, the chiabattas, the focaccias, and the baguettes, you would have two, two, or three. 
Okay, if you were for a premium, you would have one if you're medium, you would have two if you're large. Okay? If you're a small unit, and Catherine, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But if you're a small unit and you want to go with a premium sandwich to give it a try to increase your like for like, we're okay with that, right? Right? Because they're awesome, right? So, okay. So what I want you to do now is to go through, and the reason that we've built this matrix, the reason is, is because we found from the pilots this is what works, having a nice variety in there. And we're not talking about you guys changing your menu every three weeks or every month. You're going to set your menu, and it's going to be set for three, four months because you have enough variety. It was proven. You've got more than enough variety for this to work. Okay? So that's what we want you guys to do. Follow the matrix. Start here. Pick what you know is going to sell. Pick what you know is going to drive your like-for-like -like revenue. Don't pick something based on food cost. Pick something based on what it's sexy and what you know is going to sell in your operation and more importantly, what's going to give you that huge margin to put dollars in the bank. That's what you want to focus on. I'm going to leave this slide up because that's the last slide until I... Uh, Oh, actually, no, it's not. I, I just got a couple more things, and then we'll come back to the slide, okay? All right? So, so with your menu, okay, isn't that awesome? Isn't that cute? What, what I want you guys to do when you go back, and I spoke about this with the chefs. We spoke about this, about how important it is to make sure that you work with your chefs and cooks and production people in the back of the house to try those recipes, right? Remember that, guys? Why is that so important? Communication. Communication. Right? To make sure that they don't experience the same challenges and opportunities that we experience today. Right? We've learned from our mistakes, right? And that's good, right? We learned from our mistakes. We picked ourselves back up and we moved forward. Right? The same thing. So what we want to do is set our guys up for success. So we want to try those recipes in our operations a couple weeks leading up to launch date. And then what do you want to do? Chef's table. Uh, which one is yours, Jesse? Is it, is it this one here? Yes. I think it's this one here. So, and Chef Bradley was with you, right? Yes. Yeah, so Chef Bradley, which is right here, he's not with us today, he normally is, but his son's uh, had some dental work. I hate dental work. Um, anyway, um, and, uh, and this is, um, uh, Morrison, is it North York? North York. This one here is North York as well, right? Okay, awesome. And I believe this is St. Boniface out in Winnipeg. So, do a chef's table. You don't need to have me there to do a chef's table. Your chef can do a chef's table. I would gladly go if I have the time, and if I do have the time and you want me to come, I only charge $1,000. Cash. Okay? That was meant to be funny, by the way, so just saying, okay? I've just got a little sidebar thing going on now, that's all, okay? All right? But I'll guarantee you $2,000 in sales. Guarantee that, okay? But anyway, I want you guys to do, to do a chef's table, all right, when you launch. It's very important. It creates the excitement. As you can see, you have a chance to sample the different sandwiches or whatever, and you guys are going to sell it. You guys sell it. Right? If you just stand there and say, would you like a sample? Would you like a sample? Then don't expect a lot out of it. Right? But get someone there with some passion and excitement, and it's going to be awesome. Okay? Last slide before we go back to the matrix. Chef, just on the chef's table, um, if you're going to be building your marketing kit, we do have a great template for a chef's banner to start building that relationship. I know there are a lot of you have the bios on any entrance doors. I've seen some Awesome. That's excellent. Thanks, Maria. And you know what? And, and, and what I, why I love that? Puts the focus on the chef. Puts the focus on the guys and the gals in the white jacket because they're the rock stars, right? They're the ones that are going to make it. So put the focus on us, right? Okay? All right. Um, we're, not, we're, we're, not, we're not having Q&A now, though, are we? No. So, but, but before I wrap up, 
I just want to, I just want to be, and before you do your, your menus, one last thing. This is what we talked about yesterday from a waste perspective and if we don't follow a recipe. These are the numbers from waste. These are the numbers of the impact on pineapple, tuna, and chicken if you overportion by one ounce. You never saw this demo or those numbers, but those are the numbers right there for overportioning a recipe. And that's why following a recipe is so damn important. You've got to follow the recipes. Consistency, quality, cost, nutritional information. Okay? Value core premium. Fruit, parfaits, break boxes. Don't be shy. Challenge yourself. Okay? All right? And it's your future. Build your menu. Right? Challenge yourselves now for the next half hour to build that awesome menu that you know is going to drive like for like. Okay? Don't think of anything else. Just think about that. And, and you know, I always, always have to start and end with something funny. Here's some funny menus for you. Okay? Yeah. Who wants chicken for three seven or you can have real chicken for six seventy five? That'd be awesome. Right? I love this one here. All you can eat buffet, no mean all day buffet. You know come stay four hours, you eat, you go home. <laughs> and this one here. This one here, a la carte special. Chicken schnitzel. What do we got here now? We got uh, it's saved with chips and cheese sauce, chick liver pepper, peppery, pork chops, and then strange flavor chicken. I recommend you stay away from that one, okay? <laughs> Just saying, okay? All right, that was funny. Now let's be serious, okay? Matrix, there we go. And what's a small, medium, and large cooler, and how do you know which is which, like what you are? So the cooler size, it, or the small, medium, large, is based on the size of cooler that you have available within your unit. So some units within your, within your account, you might have a small cooler, a large cooler, and a medium cooler. And it, so it refers to the amount of variety within that particular cooler. So a, a medium cooler is your standard four-foot open-air cooler if you imagine that for space. Okay. Oh, four lines. Has four lines. Five shelves. Yeah. Five shelves, four shelves open air. Five, yeah, five shelves open air, four feet across. A large, a large menu is two of those. A large menu is two of those. So if you have two, four feet, eight feet of space across, that would be a large menu rotation and you can offer the large variety. And then a small is like a 36 inch cooler or something smaller if you don't have a lot of retail space and then that's a bare minimum that you need to offer. Bare minimum of variety. And then when, remember when you're building your menus, you're gonna stick with your menu for a period of time. It's not, we're not doing week one rotation, week two rotation, week three rotation. So there needs to be enough variety that the customer keeps coming back, is able to try something different every time if they so, if they please do so. Any sort of percentage with meat and vegetable and other item? Any sort of percentage? Do you guys sell that? Uh, well, absolutely you need to carry uh, at least one vegetarian option. Fifteen percent vegetarian and eighty-five. If uh, is 